Congressman Ron DeSantis represents Florida. He left the baseball practice just moments before the shooting began and remarkably had a direct run in with the shooter himself. Congressman, thanks a lot for joining us. Sure. He said at the outset that the shooter asked shortly before opening fire whether there were Republicans or Democrats on the field. He asked that of you. Yeah, so Jeff Duncan and I, we were actually shagging balls. I was at third, he was at short. Was probably, I would have been 30 feet, 40 feet from the gunman had we stayed. Jeff would have been probably 70 feet. Uh, but we wanted to beat the traffic. So Jeff and I looked at each other and said, hey, let's just get on the road. So we did. As soon as we got into the car, an individual approached us and said, it was kind of abrasive. He's just like, hey, are those Republicans or Democrats? And Jeff was like, they're Republicans. And the guy immediately turned around and kind of started walking towards the field. Um, and we, it was kind of weird, but it's the type of thing like you pull out, you just kind of shake your shoulders. As soon as we got back to the hill and heard what had happened, Jeff and I immediately talked to one another like we got to report this guy. We reported kind of what we remembered about him. But then once he was identified and they found his picture, Jeff and I were like, that's definitely him. And then Jeff had a staffer who was driving and he said 100% that was him. That is amazing. So you left without knowing what had happened. You drove all the way from Alexandria to Capitol Hill not knowing that the shooting took place. That's right. And, you know, we left, I think, probably about uh, 7.08 because we were trying to see how much quicker the commute would be if you leave yeah. then versus 7.30. Um, and uh, by the time we got back to Capitol Hill, uh, we started to get word, but I actually was in the gym, so I didn't have my phone on me. I showered, I get out, and I see on TV Scalise shot and it was stunning because I was just there 20 minutes ago. I was, Steve and I were turning double plays. I'm throwing balls from third to him. He's turning it, throwing it to first base. And that happened probably five or ten minutes before he got shot. So it's just a really surreal, and I don't think I've still, uh, you know, kind of come to terms with it yet. No, because we're approaching midnight and you look wide awake. Was the guy, you seem like you remember the exchange pretty well. Did he seem agitated or weird? I don't know if he was agitated. I mean, it was a little weird because, you know, we get out there 6.15, we practice till 7.30. It's not, there are people be out there walking their dogs and stuff, but just for a spectator, it's kind of not a normal thing to do. I mean, you got a lot of these guys are 50, even 60 years old. It isn't exactly the big leagues, and so it's not great for spectators. But he clearly knew that they were members of Congress out there, and he was very interested in the party affiliation. Uh, and so just the way he asked it was a little odd, but but definitely we had no indication that, that he uh, had any arms on his person. I think what he, had, what he did is he probably had him in the van that he was living right. in that was probably close by and then uh, just got it and then started opening fire. Is this something you think about when you're around with other members or by yourself in Washington? Well, when we're on the Hill, we have security at the Capitol, the office buildings, right. people go through the magnetometers. It's a little different. This is being off campus. And the only reason there was security there is because Steve Scalise, as a member of the leadership, he has a detail. Had Steve not been there, I think you're looking at 10 or 15 fatalities and, and many more injured. Uh, so I think it's something that we're now thinking about a little more. And I'll tell you, Tucker, we've now started talking one, amongst one another about some of the threats we get into our office since the election and since the Trump inauguration. And it's not just threats against me, uh, other members, a lot of our families. I mean, we have people, uh, I have a six month old daughter. People say they hope she dies and things like that. And so I think when something like this happens, you take that invective uh, more seriously than maybe you had in the past. I know the feeling uh, as it happens. Um, do, what do you know about the condition of the man, Mark Mika, Mark Micah, who works for Tyson, who was there um, and apparently shot a number of times, hasn't gotten a lot of attention today? Well, so his family put out a statement. Uh, they're asking for privacy. Obviously, uh, the statement, you know, uh, identified some significant uh, wounds, and he's been in surgery. So we're really praying for him. He's a really good guy. And this is a yeah. guy that was a former staffer. He's now downtown, but he still wants to come out and support the team. Um, and so, you know, very, very tragic that, that he was hurt in this, and, and we're praying for him to pull through. Yeah, I don't think people who don't live in Washington, I don't think understand what a big deal these games are. And there are tons of software.
softball leagues around town, and it really is one of the last traditions that brings people together, and it's just so sad to see this, guys. Well, $650,000 raised. Yeah. We may be able to raise a lot more now. And Steve Scalise, of everybody, he loved this game. He really had a childhood, child sense of, uh, you know, just excitement about it. So it's really tragic that he gets shot on the field that he loved being out on so much. I know, and a good guy. Uh, son, son Jefferson Parish. That's uh, sad. Congressman, thank you for coming on tonight. Thank you.